these kind of, you know, these safety nets in place, the education surrounding them, they'll go ahead and do it. It creates that environment where they feel safe. Do you have any numbers on what kind of success rate you have of businesses that you yep. more or less incubate and how that's on that right sheet? Here, right here, yep. yeah. One page with a lot of information. I, I just opened the back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah take a yeah. look at that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. anyway, we have had a contract. This is our first year to have a contract with you all to do signage tourism and marketing. I didn't bother drawing a new one up because I was hoping we might find a way to merge everything together. So at some point, whatever you decide, we can do a separate contract again. Okay. It's been great knowing what you expect from us to, to follow that. So. Anyway, okay. Any other? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, sirs. Yes. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we have submitted a request for funding for $3,000 for marketing and advertising for next year's special. Three. 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 I know. I believe it's the same amount for this as for the festival next year, next summer. Uh, obviously, there's not a lot of things going on here in 2020, so. Anything we received or were approved for last year, we did not use, so we did not take it. So, uh, all of ours are done by submitting our invoices for marketing and advertising, and then using that money for that. Uh, anything this summer, so we didn't use it. I hope next year I've got that in here. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? We're going to have old settlers next year, right? As far as we know, we were going to have it. We were going to have it this year too. <laughs> as far as we know, uh, obviously we believe that by next summer things will be quote unquote back to normal. You know, we hope. You know, there'll be some differences, I'm sure, as we go forward with this. But yes, we're planning on having. Uh, just as large a festival as we can normally have for old settlers next year in 2021. Old settlers was uh, one of the oldest old settler celebrations in Indiana, one of them in the United States. Right? It's the oldest in Indiana. I'm not sure about the United States. It was the longest continual running festival in Indiana. Obviously, we broke that streak. But we broke that streak. Yeah. No, I don't think we're going to hold that against us. So. Well, thank you very much. Yep. We certainly put you in the, in the, in the mix. And thank you. I appreciate your time. Every consideration. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? This topic? I can read this one to you so that everyone knows what else is in the mix here. Gentlemen, the highway budget would, the highway department would like to request funding in the amount of $250,000 out of the 2021 edit budget. <clears throat> These monies will be used in our chip seal program to pay for needed materials. With the decreased funding in MVH, motor vehicle highway monies, Due to reduced fuel usage because of COVID-19, there will be greater need in this next year for additional outside funding. I am particularly concerned that we do not slip a year with our road improvement program. I believe that we are in good 
position for keeping the roads at better than average user, user rating. But in my opinion, it requires our yearly attention to keep these roads upgraded. In the past, the money from Ed has accounted for 20 to 25 percent of our annual expenditure for materials to do chip and seal. Over the past year's edit funds have been accounted for 124 miles of roads that have been able to be improved. This amounts to about 22% of our hard surface roads. In my opinion, this is a very worthwhile return on investment. All roads. Uh, I think we all agree with that. Council did not approve it. We put it in line this year for the uh, money for roads and they didn't feel like we needed it so they took it out um, and so we have that money left over don't we Beth? Mm -hmm. um, just like the Delphi is still in there too. Yeah. No, three thousand dollars for the old settlers so advertised. Um, Sure that if we do not get to continue doing that, our roads will go to the sin. We have had many years now of upward movement on our roads. I hate to see it stagnate. Sure. Okay, I think we're done with those. We're ready for Castilian Keith Freeman. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, first is the drop box labeling. Um, in the pack folder I gave you guys, there's some different types of options. I just want to kind of get an idea from you, gentlemen, um, what you would like to see um, as for labeling. I was thinking of something like just a label that says Carroll County Courthouse, um, collection box only on the sides. Um, I also attached, I had my uh, part-time custodian on one of the photos. I had her step out there basically for where she would be standing. No, it's not. Throw this under the camera. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I, so basically this is where the railing dips in and then comes back out. And it would be up against this side here because there's got to be enough room to get to the back side to withdraw any of the mail that's in there. And that's basically where it'd be. It'd be a little bit further, but as you can see from the camera um, 13, you can get good front view, you know, if anybody was to vandalize or whatever else. Um, so it'd be in a very secure location um, for that purposes. It'd be a little bit more forward where she's not standing in front of the sign. Um, Are you violating any law? Or Part of the, the ADA, yeah. ADA call, call it, um, guidelines is that there has to be a five foot square at the beginning and end of the ramp. So there is. I mean, you have the approachway, the landing in front of the door, and you have the concrete driveway at the end. Um, so it is ADA compliant that we're asking them to be pedestrians? It, it, it doesn't specify on that. I have not found it yet um, on that. Part of the ADA. The only thing I read was upon was the five foot square on the front and end of the ramp. So it's not going to be on the ramp, it's going to be on the inside. It's going to be on the inside, yes. It's, it's going to be on the inside. It's yeah, so you see where these two rails, where the walkway is, and then it, it jets out and then back, they'll be inside that little nook there. I think that nook is <coughs> made for like two people are coming, one coming out and don't see the other one coming up, one can pull over and the other one can pass. I can see if that goes against the ADA on placing the back. I bet you um, that's what that's for. Just a guess. From what I read upon. So if that doesn't work, and that's, I mean, of course, common sense, you look at it and you say, yes, that's from the passing for handicapped or wheelchairs or whatever it may be. Um, I get that. So if that's not the location, I guess that'll be another conversation for later um, for where we actually want to position this. I would suggest that uh, after the uh, drainage board meeting that the three of us go down to the, this booking spot together. Do you have time to get the drainage board meeting over? The other location.
station would be on the south side. Um, on the south side because it's a flat concrete from the U drive. It's flat, it can be positioned in that area as well where the old metal ramp has seen up concrete. Um, that can be positioned there as well too because it's easy accessible if anybody's handicap um, requires a wheelchair, it's all flat, they don't want to require them to go steps. And there's a pad right there they can turn around on and go right back. And then there's that side as well. Yeah, I can get a camera on that one too. So um, just kind of want to get a feel for what you guys would want for labeling. Um, I just, it's back here in the back. I brought it up. Um, as you can see, it does say USA US Mail in front. But that would be a thick plate over top of that, covering that up where it will say US Mail um, with that mailbox there. So it's got your parcel down below, your regular mail on top, um, and your retrieve on the back side of both areas. Um, what do you think, Joe? Penny, she gave she got some ideas from the um, other courthouses and stuff like that. They were pretty general. Um, one's typically new, and I think the other one's Clinton, I do believe. Still got that. Yeah, I Clinton come down here. I like this. This is all the U.S. Postal Service mailbox. I like that. Right. Uh, but you're well, going to get some people dropping their letters. Correct. <laughs> well, it's going to depend on where it actually going to be placed, too. Correct. Because if it's not placed over here, the signage might have to be different on the side or the front. Correct. I mean, I, I figured that I would put the signage on both, on all, placed all three sides, three sides. Um, where it's accessible by the public. So that way they see it. Whereas, and I was thinking something where it very boldly states and clearly states that this Carroll County Courthouse. Um, collection box only, no U.S. mail or however you guys want to word it, however it needs to be. Where in the world is Kia Paha? It's just one of my just, I, <laughs> well, Google, I mean, it's very, very um, hard to come up with to get those kind of pictures because most of everything is for like ballot collection boxes that you that you come up with. We have a, we have a seal for the courthouse, don't we? Like, you guys I like to see that on the side. Okay, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Collection box. Like that. Yep. Right here. That's what I'd like to see. Put on both sides and on the front door. Down there on the okay. bottom. Now, I don't think we need both compartments because everybody's going to use it like they think they are. The top is going to fill up pretty quick. You know, like on the weekend. Yeah, correct. I, I would think that depending on the, which departments, their busy season and how many parcels they get, which has, you know, I mean, you had that whole entire bottom chamber right. for the bigger packages and stuff like that too. So, um, I like the one, just the one area. Just the one area. Comment? Yeah, um, as far as placement, I would really like to see it on the pad, on the that concrete pad where he's talking about is pretty good size. I'd like the to north see, side here. Yeah, yeah, I'd really like to see it close to there for collection purposes, closer for us to, um, so that we don't have to walk all the way down there every day because we'll have to check it every day. And also, I think placing it up here at the courthouse near the door will further discourage people from mistaking it for U.S. mail. Whereas if you put it down the drive, it's not any more likely to mistake it for. What about on the south side? Away from the courthouse. I mean, if you put it in the drive where somebody can access. Well, no, I was I was right there before the steps where that metal ramp used to be, yeah. putting it somewhere in that vicinity of an area to where I still get the camera views yeah. on. Well, yes. Um, but the, the closer it is to the courthouse door entrance, the less likely they are to mistake it for you. Strategically place it somewhere where cameras are able to hit it. Um, something 
issue was to go on or somebody was supposed to do, do something they weren't supposed to do, drop off something they weren't supposed to. At least I used to put trash in that one too. I mean, that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. oh, so that's why you're against it. <laughs> so, 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 so that's why I wrote it. <laughs> so where does Clinton County have theirs? You know? I don't know. I don't know exactly where they have it. North side courthouse, right uh, to the right of the entrance. Well, plus, you know, there's safety issues either for somebody putting something there as opposed to, plus for the people carrying that article back, they can be you know, closer to the door. Or not. Most of the end of the point came from the start. Typica New Counties is mounted right outside the front doors of the city county, the county building. It's mounted on the building. There's a smaller yeah, and most of them that yeah. are using yeah. Google yeah. have brought either they're mounted yeah. right yeah. next to the front door or they're mounted to the building as well right. as a ground. I mean, they're right there on top of the building, so they're not out in the open very much. Most of them are right against the building. So we don't, I'd like to see them on the south side. People can pull up and walk up or they can use that drive to bring up and walk up and drop it off because they can still get the handicap over here parking. So I'd rather see them on the south side than have anybody complain about it being there for a wheelchair handicap. And also with that too, see, um, with that being over on the south side as well, and most of the time these people are going to use this, it's going to be in the evening after hours. You have those parking spots that are right there as well too. That gives them, if they have a van that has to have the drop lift or stuff like that. So I'd rather really put it on the south side. Still against it, but I'd rather have it on the south side. Well, my opinion is, is that instead of him coming to us asking for any of his estimates, 
he see something in the courthouse that needs to fix, estimates are free, loans are free, then he can present them all at once. So now we, you know, he presents this, now we gotta wait another three weeks. Then we have to go through the estimates, then we gotta wait another two weeks. I think I'd like to just give him permission to, if he sees something that needs repaired that needs an estimate he can't do, give him permission to go ahead and get estimates. So I was really opened up the blinds. You really see the wall where it's bubbled out in a lot of areas. Um, you can see, and it's just, especially down around the windows, it's all bubbled out, and which raises into other people's requests for work to be done in their area or a new area. That vibration is only going to make it worse. Um, so I'm ready to fall off if someone touches your ice block. Yeah. Well, some of it's like cracked open. Two of them were $1,800, one was 
2200 and the last one was 12. Um, and of these, uh, like Smith, um, I didn't really talk to him much further after he gave his quote. Um, Kate, he was insured but not bonded. So, but with the tree technicians, they are insured, they're licensed, bonded. They have all the paperwork and documentation to back them up. You have the money in your ground to keep the I haven't moved some stuff around, but I can, I can cover the cost on that. You have to make sure you watch your budget. You know? uh -huh. You've been having the yard mode too, because I know you've been visiting. Yep. Yep. That's eating a lot of your budget. Yep. I make a motion to go with the tree technicians to have the tree removed. If you guys want to wish to have it removed, it's kind of a nice one around. Is that the one that's not bonded? No. No, no. That's the very last sheet, man. Are you sure that it's going to be, that it's going to die if we don't from, ever, from the from Tate's and Tate's and the tree technicians, that's what they, that's what they told me. Yeah, this the damage, the tree they they damage. don't have the bark to take it up. And you see there, you got another tree growing inside the tree. It's his tree. Yeah, for 12 years as a kid. Oh, that was cheap. And we can always replace that tree with another tree later on. Once we, we can have some kind of. I think if you stomp out of there and everything, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get the shirt down and immediately plant it. Okay, can I make a motion to Yes. How oh, was it? Right on here. So go ahead and do the $1,200 estimate the tree technicians. Motion second to go with the $1,200 tree. Technicians. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. And last but least um, is the elevator. Um, you asked me to get a breakdown of the time frame and to get in writing um, when they would have this job completed. Um, email, email me back with uh, the breakdown of costs and it's two to two and a three year plan with everything. And he also emailed me back stating that um, he had received confirmation of the primary unit to be completed um, by late September, early October. If we agree to move forward on the power unit. I think we need to, and I believe we talked. I think we already have the money. We don't need have that money you can have this yeah. year. You don't have to go for an additional for the council. So that one's canceled. So we can probably do both things at once, the 32,000 instead of two payments. Down and 50 percent after completion of work. Um, it's like 16,203. Right. 16, yeah. Oh, I see. 16,203. We do that, do we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. They want half the hey, first. They want some before they start and some at the end. But the only thing I know that we can use the government usually does use that uh, does pay down is like a, a, a mobilization fee for doing a bridge or something where they're moving equipment in. They pay for that. I, th I looked at it as a, they're used to people, you know, not paying the full bill, so they want at least half of it down. But I can ask sure. them that as well too. But if the state doesn't want us to do that, if, if, if you know, it's the government, you know, uh, they're they're going to get paid monies and so it really should be a one completion. Not bring back up then. So if they say that it is 50 and 50, um, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Okay. Either way, I'll pay. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that you know, we don't. So we need a motion on this? Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Motion to approve the new, what's it called? Power unit. Power unit. Power unit for the elevator. Can you say it went through? Is it dead? Cube cat. Cube cat. Cube cat. Yes. That's my motion. I'll second. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. And just get all of you when you guys are done. Next item of business. There are two ordinances uh, that were discussed in the last meeting. Uh, Ted, we got one thing ahead of you. Nancy Whitaker is here the game. I see you. Okay. That's the seven Z. No. No, you're right. Sorry about that. Would you please have a friend there? You're Huh? Hi. Uh, again, we're getting to September 17th, the week of September 17th, where I'd like to have a table display for Constitution Week in the rotunda, if that's possible. Sure. Okay, we got a motion to approve the display in the rotunda for Constitution Week. One second, second. All in favor say aye. aye. You got that now. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, this is just for information. Our chapter is also cleaning up the Samuel Milroy Monument, uh -huh. where there's weeds and bushes and tree sprouts and some small trees, and we're kind of presently working on that. Wonderful. I haven't been, I haven't visited it in two or three years, probably. So I don't Let's know the condition. Let's have some overgrowth. Some overgrowth. But we appreciate you maintaining that up there. Did everybody know where it is? It's up here on the, on the hill. On the old way to Camden, but they can't go through there anymore. Is that where it's the long bridge is? Yeah. It's going close. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, David McCain. Good morning, dude. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to give a little update on the uh, Centennial Monument, or better known as the uh, Samuel Milroy Monument, uh, which is uh, uh, being taken care of greatly. Uh, we're grateful for uh, taking care of the monument by the Daughters of American Revolution. Um, this is on private land. It's probably the most important, or one of the most important monuments in Carroll County. Uh, this is the area of uh, Carroll County's cradle of pioneer settlement. Um, and Sam Milroy himself was uh, had a farm there, uh, was probably the most prominent citizen of Carroll County, pioneer citizen of uh, back in 1826 when he established it. The monument itself is uh, was erected in 1916, so it's the centennial of uh, the state uh, uh, statehood for Indiana, um, and uh, it's on private land. Uh, it was owned by uh, Mary Van Van Sickle. Uh, she died a few years ago, and uh, it is now in for foreclosure by the Fifth Third Bank. Um, it's in jeopardy in a sense because it's. It's always been on private land. When it was on Milroy's land, uh, people uh, just assumed it was open, free to the public forever, and, and uh, private owners continued that way. Um, uh, Mary Vansicle is very interested in uh, uh, history, and so she uh, she allowed uh, uh, develop. We we put in a, the HHI. Uh, Heartland Heritage, I forgot I mentioned that I'm with Heartland Heritage Inc. HHI and uh, we, we put in a couple of extra trails off the Monon Trail to, to the monument and it's difficult keeping up and I'm so glad that the uh, EAR is working to do that. Um, I, I don't have any requests or anything at this point, uh, but I just wanted to give you a bit of an update of we're concerned that it could be you know, gone to a sale or something like that and new owners would not uh, honor the, uh, the cost uh, of allowing the public access to the uh, to the monument. 
And in a situation like that, when there is a history of uh, 100 plus years of public use of having an access there, is there any kind of a uh, Grandfather clause understood the easement through there for that? I think it's too late to do that. Uh, it, it's in bankruptcy now. Yes. Um, I mean, to to acquire a an easement by prescription, you have to be it has to be adverse. Uh, adverse. That's what I would have thought. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was by permission of the previous owner. It wouldn't be adverse. So uh, I. I made notes here. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if the presenters here have, have a suggestion if, if, uh, if there's a state agency that might, whose support might be enlisted to uh, acquire this easement or by some designation uh, make it so that it can't be uh, uh, sold off by the bankruptcy trustee. I was going to ask, ask those. It's foreclosure on bankruptcy. Pardon? Is it a foreclosure, not a bankruptcy? Uh, yeah, it's foreclosure. Excuse me. Okay, okay. foreclosure. Okay. Is it in? Is, it's in Carroll County, so it, we should be able to look that up. Yeah, it's in foreclosure. Yeah. Okay. Also, is it? Did that happen when Mary Vanceville they owned it, or did it go with from the previous owner? Because if the um, the uh, statue, I grew up out there. That's why I was wondering. I mean, did did Lairmores have it out there too? Did the, before the Van Sickles? Did the, did the Lairmores? Oh, yes. Yeah. So wouldn't it kind of follow through maybe? If there was another owner that. If there was never an easement created in writing, it's. There's no easement. Well, I was just wondering if there was. I mean, if there could be. Uh, well, yeah, the Lairmores also, the previous owner. In this. But you're. Uh, if it's in foreclosure, or uh, uh, same, 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 same difference, same probably. Yeah. So we need to kind of get into that while it's still in the court's hands. It might be possible to do something before it. Um, it might be something that, I don't know, uh, if there's a uh, interested buyer that we don't know about. So my suggestion is that you give your contact information to the auditor. I can look up the foreclosure uh, in the court records and see what we can do and I'll uh, stay in touch with the well, that, that would be good, yes. Okay. Okay. How big how how much of a site is it more is it access as well as the site of the well, well we have a little map here with that okay. would help. Okay. Uh, does does the auditor have that map? No, I don't think so. Okay. This was just created uh, Days ago. If you could go next door and, and ask them to make a copy of that. I don't know whether the commissioners would want to see this. It's 2.6 acres. Uh, yeah. David, isn't that still a county road running right up to it? Well, it's a, it's a question mark. It's Old Camden Road, and it ends at the top of the hill. Uh, runs right past it. Um, and uh, uh, Actually, maybe you want to show this on the... Um, it, uh, we were thinking the city owned it, uh, Old Camden Road, but the uh, beacon doesn't show any... Uh, uh, maybe like some cool, cool. Beacon doesn't show who owns it, it's just like to the center of the road practically. Um, the parcel includes that whole big triangle. Right. Well, uh, here's Old Camden Road right here. Uh, here's the Monon High Bridge Trail, which is uh, in development and with the city's uh, a grant, next to trails uh, grant. Uh, here is uh, the Van Sickle property. It says 2.63 acres. And the monument is right here, right where that dot is. Uh, Centennial Monument, same thing as Melroy Monument. Uh, and so uh, this would be a, a point here, which really doesn't affect the house over here. A house is 
are probably going to be demolished. Uh, but it's a, a less than a quarter acre um, that would, uh, HHI owns this property up here with the trail and the bicentennial plaza and so forth. This is the private land here. Um, Where is the logical place for access to be? Well, off of the trail, we created uh, two new trails, one from here that kind of goes like this and goes over here. Another one over here comes down over here. So uh, there's no parking right there, really, uh, along Old Camden Road. Um, and the real parking is going to be developed over in other places. Uh, we might have some excess or not. ADA parking up here, I don't know. Uh, it's, um, Mary Vansickle was very interested in history, very interested in preserving this, and uh, she was, uh, we were all set to, uh, she was gonna donate it. We had it figured out. We were ready to go out there with survey markers and figure out what she was gonna donate. And then we came up with some complications, some complications in our family and so forth, and it, it fell through. And uh, um, so, and even the uh, her daughter is is interested in preserving it, but it's it's in the foreclosure now, and so uh, can be. That was the bank foreclosing on. Yes, Fifth Third Bank. Well, we'll just let uh, you. Ted, figure out if you need to come back to us, come back to us. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate both of your presentations. Well, Jed, it's up to you now. Okay. There are two ordinances, actually, uh, both of were discussed at the last meeting, and I've got a script for you, so you may want to adopt these in the same meeting. get a look at the uh, presence number number four the uh, oh four and the ordinance establishing the creating the COVID nineteen response and non reverting fund. This is for so that the funds that come back for reimbursement to the county go into this non reverting fund if they're not all spent out by the end of the year, they, it doesn't go into the general fund. It's made as identified. So uh, the procedure is that if you, this is really, a, I think it's a requirement of the CARES Act, uh, and you need to do it. Uh, so, um, it, so the first one you've got there would be ordinance number 2020-04, and I've given you a script there. If, uh, if you want to get started on that, if you have questions, uh, we can do it at a point where we start getting motion in a second. Then we've got a discussion or a question. You can do it. Move it to order number 2020. Move that title on it. Ordinance number 2020-04 is an ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the County of Carroll creating a COVID-19 response non-reverting plan.
the second ordinance is the ordinance that actually uh, Ken Irwin's firm uh, submitted for the uh, internal controls and uh, Beth found the, the ordinance and I reformatted it so that it can be adopted by uh, the board and um, it would be number 05, is that correct? I think, I was, I was wondering if it went to four, I think it's three, I think you named it last week.